Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. The Nexion has a COV axe that is replacing the COV. I haven't really been using it in the videos, but I'm going to start. And so I'm going to take a video that a series that I'm currently working on, the real time clock one, and I'm going to convert it over and just kind of show you some of the features. I'm going to start by going over the cove and then I'm going to show you how I convert it to the COVX or conversion X. In my last video on the runtime clock, I used the cove to convert the runtime clock, which is a value or a, a number, and I convert it to text. And I create a string and then I populate this field up here. But for this video, I'm going to start by focusing on this box here. I'm not using this box yet. I'll eventually be showing the real time clock and the Arduino in it. But for our function, all I'm going to do is a simple conversion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number 16 and I'm going to convert it to text and I'm going to store it in here. And the zero just is a default, which means do the best you can with what you have. So it'll just take the 16 and it'll populate that field. And when I click, I get 16, just like we would expect. But what gets interesting in the old one is if you change this from 0 to 1, it's gonna, it is now saying I only want to display one digit. And we have two there. So it's going to pick one of those digits to display. When I first started working with the Nexion, I would have swore it would, it would show the 6. It would show the, the least significant bit, because it's what I would expect. But instead it shows the 1. So it shows the leftmost number of bits. So if you had a, a 100, let's say, and you pick two, it would show one zero. So it would show the, the left two digits. And for this example, we did it, uh, we took the number 16 and just did a straight conversion. I'm gonna add a number field to this. I'm gonna set this value to 15. Now instead of doing a direct conversion, we're going to take the number n0.val and we're going to convert it over. We're going to change this back to 0. So this time when we run debug and click on it, we should get 15. And we do. But what if you want to go the other way? What if you want to convert t3 T3 text to NOVAL. In that case, you have to have a number in this field. So we're going to change this to 123. We're going to leave this 0 and we're going to run debug. Now we left this at 15, so when I click on this, it should overwrite. And it does. So we get the number 123, which once again does make sense. But what if we set this one to 2 instead? Like we did the other one, where we only were transmitting two digits. Is it going to pick the 12 and put it down there? Is it going to pick the 23? Since this is the text version, what's going to happen? So we're going to change this to 2. Now originally I would have guessed 23, but this time I'm thinking it's going to get a 12. And it does. But unlike the other one where it kind of hacks it and places it in there, the value down here is 12. When you're only displaying the digits up here, it was text, so you couldn't use it as a number anyway. I guess if you were to convert it back, it would be 12. But the value down here is 12. So you have to be a little bit careful when you convert the data back and forth. But what happens if we make it equal to 4? Is it going to put some leading zeros down here or not? When I click on it, you still just get one, two, three. So it doesn't add leading zeros. If you had one, two, three down here and you were going from a number to a text, it would add a zero to the front of that. I'll show you that next. So we have to turn these two around. We're going to take n zero and we're going to store it in the text. But now I have to delete this. So now when I click on it, it was 15, remember, not 1, 2, 3, but it adds the leading zeros. But it only does that because this is a text field. If this were going from text to number, if I'd converted it and I left this to 4, it would still just be 15 down here. Now we're going to get into the real-time clock example. And you can see I have 8, 25, 20, 20, 
and it's 5.42 p.m. But when this is a less than 10, it, it only shows one digit here, just like the eight over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the code function in place, but I'm gonna set this up so that it will display leading zeros. There you go, right there's a good example. So I go down to the timer, and all I have to do for this is change these to two. Only one I wanna be careful with is the year, because the year here on the RTC zero, you can see the tool tip, it says the year. It's already four and it's gonna be four, and I don't really have to worry about it adjusting. So now I'm gonna use the old code function, but I'm gonna set it to two digits. So now when I run it, it should look a little bit better, because when I bring the Arduino data in, and then when I use an actual real-time chip clock for the to compare all three, I want it all to look the same. And you can see that now we have 0, 8, and when this counts around, it'll be um, 0. And just to help things out, I'm going to set this reset all so that it'll set this the minutes to 4. Click on here. If you're not familiar with the real-time clock, it's just RTC. And then you can go down. If you have mouse click over them, it'll tell you which one is the minutes, and it's four. We'll just set it equal to four. Now when I click on it, that should change to zero, four, and it does. And so this way the format will look the same on all these, even if they get out of whack a little bit, which is what I'm testing for. Now if I want to set this back to the regular time, I just go up here and I reset the simulator, RTC. And now we're back to the regular time. And now we're gonna go through and change these all to COVEX. And you can see when I change it, it changes to red and we get the tooltip down here. That's because COVE is no longer um, valid, even though it works. They're trying to discourage people from using it, so they have changed the IDE so it doesn't show the, so it doesn't show the tooltip. So I've changed them all to Cove X, but we have a problem. You can see in here that we need two variables or two integers, when right now we only have the two. So if we were to compile this now, we get an error, invalid number of arguments. And when in doubt on the next one, I found if you just put a zero in, it usually works, because that's like the default to uh, to just default to whatever works the best. Now we're gonna run this and we'll rerun it and I don't think you'll see any difference. And you can see it looks just the same. If I go to reset, it goes to four, we get the same results that we had before. This last digit is the format that it's displayed in. It can either be an integer, which is what we're using, it can be comma separated and all that means is that if it's 2000, it's gonna be two comma zero, zero, zero. It just adds that comma in there. And then the last one is it converts it over to hex. So now we'll go through and show you that. We're gonna show it to you in this right here. Um, and we're gonna change this to COVEX. I'm gonna do a comma, and then we'll do a one. We're gonna leave the four digits because now even though this is only 15, and we're gonna move it up here, it should go to 0015, but will it insert that comma? And you can see that it's smart enough to know that even though the text is 0015, the value is still 15, so it's not going to insert the comma. So what we'll do is we'll change this to 1500. Now oh, but you can see it's only gonna display four characters because that's what we have it set to. So instead of the leading zeros, it takes the leftmost four characters. So it's cut off the zero on this side and it counted the comma as a character. And this is why most of the time you won't have that four in there. You'll just leave it at zero. I'm gonna set it to zero now and, and rerun. So we change this four up here to a zero and we run in debug. And now that zero, it just tells it to use the best 
that it knows how to use, which is 1500 with the comma. Now I'm going to show you the hex version. So we change this to 2, but just so we get a number we recognize, 15 hex should be F. Now when I click on this, it should be F. And for some reason it puts a leading zero on it. I never have quite figured out that. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. If I, if I set it to one, like I only want one character, well then it's gonna put the zero in there because it's gonna start on the left. So this is one of those weird nection things that I haven't quite figured out how it decides whether it adds that leading zero or not. But it doesn't really hurt anything having it on there. I'm gonna do one more and we'll change it to 16. And we got one zero. And you'll notice that it didn't add zero one zero. But sometimes if I had this set at like, well, we'll set it to 1500 or 1600. You can see now it added that leading zero back in. So like I said, I'm not sure how it does that or how it doesn't. But what we're gonna do next is we're gonna um, convert it the other way. So we'll put 1600 in here and we'll do, we'll convert in hex, we'll convert this value, the text into the number. So we'll change this number to 1600 and we'll convert this to T3 comma 0 comma 2. So we're going to let it set its size but we're going to convert it to a hex value. So now when we click on it, is that going to stay 1600? Nope, it came 5632. So let's pull up the calculator. What it did over here is it assumed that this was a number and converted it into hex into the text. And what you'll find is when you do it the opposite way, it, it assumes that the text is in hex and it converts it into a decimal number. And you can see that the decimal is 5632. So I find that's kind of interesting because it always assumes that when you use the hex in the cove x, that the text is hex and that the number is not hex. And I chose this point to do this video for two reasons. One, just because I wanted to do it and I thought that this would be a good real world example of showing you how and I needed to get the Nexion display ready for the next step in the real-time clock where I have the Arduino putting up the data so you can see the same date and time coming down. And then I should be able to hit this reset button and it'll reset all three to the exact same time. I'm hoping it can be fast enough to set the seconds too. So it'll be interesting to find out. So in this video I went over how to convert the Cove to the Cove X. You take what you want to change and then where you want it to go. And then the second digit is the same as the cove, where it's just the number of characters you want to display. But the, net, the thing that's changed is you can show it with a comma in it, or you can change it to hex. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.